Before we begin today's show, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about a new element to the podcast. I'm now officially on Patreon. Have you ever thought to yourself, why didn't Derek ask that question? I know I certainly have. Then head over to patreon.com slash ddiamondpodcast and you'll get the chance to ask the guest of my show a question. You'll also get early access to episodes and a chance to vote on show topics. I'd also like to give a shout out to our patrons, Josh Shinnewark and Tim Spivey. Thank you guys so much for your contributions. And again, if you'd like to be a part of our awesome community, just head over to patreon.com slash ddiamondpodcast. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Derek Diamond Experience Podcast, where every week I take a look inside the world of film and television with those who have lived it and experienced it. I am your host, Derek Diamond, and joining me today for this awesome roundtable discussion as voted on by the Patreons of the Derek Diamond Experience. First, we have a returning guest, the writer, director, and producer of the film Survey, Mr. Steve Wise. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. And also joining us is one of the stars of the film Survey and also the co-writer of the horror comedy, which you should all go watch after you watch this podcast, <laughs> Mr. Jason Robbins, as well as my co-host on the Nerd Cave Retro podcast. How are you, my friend? Howdy, howdy. Awesome. Well, how are how are you guys doing? I know uh, with the three of us haven't really talked together as a group in quite a while since then. We've dealt with pandemics. We've dealt with hurricanes. We've got. I think the last time we talked together was the uh, Terminator roundtable, wasn't it? Yeah, that sounds about so. right. Those were much oh, simpler wow. times, it seems like. <laughs> we didn't have to worry about pandemics or storms anything like that that's happened uh, the, no. the craziness that has been 2020 so uh but but we're here today i mentioned uh, the patreon earlier so every month since i started the patreon i've put a poll up where they can vote on the uh, monthly roundtable discussion and i figured with october we'd have a fun horror halloween type discussion and in a landslide was the evil dead franchise so we are here to talk about. I think it was actually a clean sweep by the patrons. They all voted for Evil Dead. So, uh, as it should be. <laughs> so funny enough, uh, I'll get us started with the my first memory of Evil Dead. It was actually the Evil Dead musical that we had here in town. <laughs> I want to say it was last year because I I knew of the movies, but I never watched them. And then I saw advertisements for the show in Pensacola, and I was like, this sounds kind of interesting. And I and saw the show. Jan- January 2019, it seems like so long ago. <laughs> it, it really does. So I went in, never seen the movies before in my life. <laughs> so I had no clue what was going on, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> and it was really well done. I was like, now i got to go and watch the movies. And I did. And I will start with the uh, the first one, which was released, I think, in 81. It might have been it was I think it was very early 80s when it came out. But we'll, yeah. we'll uh, we'll start with you, Steve. What is your first memory of the Evil Dead franchise? Uh, watching it on VHS. Uh, I was a teenager in the 80s and uh, I was really into horror films. Uh, that was the. Uh, <clears throat> the days when uh, uh, go to the video store and there'd be a big wall of horror movies and uh, they'd have every cheesy, you know, <laughs> low budget film imaginable. And <laughs> Evil Dead stood out. Um, in fact, I remember, I want to say that the second movie came out before I saw the first one. Um, and I remember seeing the poster and the, and the ads for it. And I thought that was just the coolest thing. And as soon as I was able to I watched the first movie and um, was kind of blown away by, by it, honestly. And just couldn't wait to see the, you know, see the second and eventually the third one. <laughs> what about you, Jason? Um, my first memory, I, I saw um, me and a, a, one of my best friends in high school, still one of my really good friends to this day. Uh, we went and saw Army of Darkness in the theater and fell in love with it 
uh, from that point, we went and bought the, uh, the, we went immediately, even after out of the theater, went to the comic book store, bought the comic book adaptations of it, um, started reading about the, uh, you know, the first two movies. So we went and got evil dead Two, um, rented it. And that became our go-to movie all the time. We watched it all the time. I mean, I must have seen that Evil Dead 2 on VHS probably 50 times while I was in high school. And um, I didn't actually see the first one until way later. And I don't know why. It was just one of those things where, you know, talking with people that were into that movie and everything, they're like, oh, the Evil Dead 2 is so much better. The first one's just kind of you know, not that great. And two is basically a remake of one. So there was never really like a, a big need to go back and watch the first one. And I didn't actually go back and watch it till probably the late nineties. And when I did, I absolutely fell in love with it. Just the whole punk rock nature of it and being a huge Bruce Campbell fan, you know, reading his book of chins could kill and all that stuff, like about all the, you know, behind the scenes stuff of how that movie got made and, you know, I bought the, I still have the, you know, the clamshell collector's edition, uh, Evil Dead. And I just, I couldn't get enough of the Evil Dead franchise when I was younger. I mean, I had the posters. I went, I, I went to the video store and um, somehow finagled a Army of Darkness poster from the video store. And I still have it to this day. Um, I have a poster of the three women that were in the first evil dead movie and they all signed it and it's a poster that says the women of evil dead like i was just i even had the evil dead the musical poster that was given to me as a christmas present like back in the early 2000s when it first started maybe even the late i don't even know exactly when i got it but i had that poster on my wall forever and i still haven't seen the musical and you saw it and never <laughs> saw the movies <laughs> you had you know you had two chances <laughs> i know and I, I just for some reason couldn't make it over there to see them and that was a that's a huge regret of mine because i and you were in that, town during the last time around <laughs> i know i don't you were know performing. why performing <laughs> it's crazy i think i was performing that night that it was going on <laughs> He was too busy entertaining the masses at Perfect Plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you bring up an interesting point about Evil Dead 2 as com as opposed to Evil Dead 1. So I did watch the series in order, but something I did notice almost immediately with watching Evil Dead 2, and I think this is a fair comparison, but I kind of compare it to T2 and T1, T being Terminator, when it comes to the look of the film like evil dead one looks like a b movie whereas evil dead two looks a little bit cleaner the camera looks a little bit better it's shot a bit better the acting honestly i think is a bit better so that that was kind of the the comparison i noticed immediately between one and two and i i've well, heard the same oh go ahead steve i was just gonna say the, the reason for that is that the first movie was shot in 16 millimeter yeah and in fact um the blu-ray that i have you can watch it either in 185 to one aspect ratio, you know, which is basically 16 by nine, uh, like the high def television, or in the original 1.33 to one, which is you know basically a four to three aspect ratio, like the old televisions are. Hmm. But the reason it's in that aspect ratio is that's the aspect ratio for the full frame of 16 millimeter. When you blow it up to 35, uh, generally speaking, they crop it when it's projected, but, um, but that's, you know, it was shot full frame. And uh, so it's, it's a little bit different, but it's very grainy and just has a, you know, that, that B picture look to it because it was shot on a, a smaller film size. Yeah, but even though it was shot on, it, it was a B, you know, it has that B movie look, there's still that Sam Raimi-ness to it. Mm -hmm. Like he he already had those, you know, things we associate with Sam Raimi, he had those when he made that movie. Well, the and, thing is that, that you know, he, because it was shot with, you know, very little budget and shooting on 16, a lot, and most of it was handheld, he had to be creative. And, and I mean, watch that movie, virtually every shot, there's something creative about that shot. He doesn't have just a standard, you know, over the shoulder shot or yeah. you know, shot reaction type of scenario. Every single frame is filled with some sort of 
creativity to make it interesting to watch. Because, I mean, let's face it, there's not that much story there, and the characters yeah. <laughs> are pretty paper thin. And so you have to be engaged in what's happening on the screen, and he delivers. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, it's even though the, the effects are still a bit, you know, dated, like the makeup and stuff, it's still, it's those, um, you know, Ray Harryhausen style, you know, yeah. stop motion things that are so engaging, yeah. like when you watch it and it, even though it looks fake, you're still like, Oh my God, that looks so creepy. Uh, and just, I don't know the acting, like you said, the story is very paper thin, but at the same time he did, like you can tell that he was, he was destined for something great because he had those um, uh, things that were, you know, very much him already there that he was displaying. Well, and I also think the graininess and the B quality, in a way, adds to it. Like you said, the, the story is kind of paper thin, but the thing that stood out to me was the look of the film and even the effects. Like, like you said, they, yeah, they're a little bit dated, but. They didn't really bother me, you know, watching the movie but, for the first time. I, you know, the I, I thought is, little nuances added to it. But the makeup effects and the style that they went for with it still is effective. And, you know, you just didn't see anything like that before. It was very innovative in the way that it was presented. And it's still, even though there's this cheesy factor to it, that cheesiness is what really makes it endearing. And, yeah. you know, it's just kind of a weird thing to say about a horror movie, but it's just, it's such a fun movie. And it's fun in a different way than Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness is. But it's still, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's totally engaging. You can watch it and just not look away because every, every moment there's something interesting happening. And another thing about that movie, it's weird going back to it after seeing, you know, I've watched them all in the reverse order. You know, I, I started with Army of Darkness, went to Evil Dead 2, and then watched the first one. And you go back and watch that first one, and, and Bruce Campbell just, he's got that Bruce Campbell, like, leading man quality, but he doesn't have that charisma yet yeah. that's fully on display in part two, because he has to carry that entire movie on his shoulders. And he just has this... Uh magnetic charisma by the second one so like what happened between that first movie and the part two that just mm -hmm. he becomes this fully formed character well i think the the um basically that's just it that they developed the character he didn't have a character in the first movie he was just one of the guys and, and mm -hmm. i think that that was you know the real drawback for of that film was that they didn't really think about characterization at all it's like well you know, he had his girlfriend and his sister and the other girl who was Scotty's girlfriend. And Scotty was just kind of there. And, and you know, they all just were just there. You know, they, they yeah. didn't have unique personalities. And by the time this, you know, basically Act 3 came along when, when Ash was the sole survivor fighting all his friends who had been taken over the Deadites, um, it's, you know, his his character kind of came out at that point as far as being the survivor and fighting for his life, but the sarcasm and the humor didn't really take full effect until the second movie. I think at that yeah. point realizing that, okay, he's, he is the sole survivor. And which, which of course in the second movie, they kind of rewrote how many people were uh, yeah. <laughs> with them initially. Um, but for him to have gone through that experience and then be continuing to go through it, I think they sat down and said, okay, we've got to have a personality here. We've got to have something where the audience can be entertained by you. And, you know, Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi and Ted and, you know, the whole family, um, they grew up watching the Three Stooges and they were heavily influenced by that. And so that's what they brought into the picture. And you can see a little bit of it in the first movie, but the second movie, and in particular the third movie, really hits home the Three Stooges angle. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's that what I love about that book, If Chins Could Kill. If you're at all interested in how those movies were made, I highly recommend If Chins Could Kill, uh, especially you, Derek. If you've never read that book, that is a, a great book to pick up and read. Does he narrate the audiobook version? 
I think he does. Yeah. And oh, I'm, uh, I'm all in. From what I understand, he does some tangents um, t- uh, in the book. If I, if I remember correctly, I'd and love to get the audio book this version. One too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which, uh, autograph. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Nice. I, I have a signed copy of make love the Bruce Campbell way too. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to shout out a few people who are watching on Facebook Live. Uh, Chris Davis says, The first time watching the Evil Dead movies was when I spent the weekend with some friends back in the mid-80s. It was Evil Dead 2. Uh, Josh Shinnewerk says, One of my favorite things about Evil Dead was how cheesy it was. I really enjoy bad movies. I find them really enjoyable. Uh, Nick Flagstar says, Lots of attention from the ladies. And shout out to Carlos Longoria, (laughs) who is watching. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, that was something I noticed, too, was the incorporation of the humor, because it wasn't really there in the original. And you it was, it was there a little bit, you know, but it was kind of hidden among the gore. And, you know, because like um, when one of the characters, <laughs> the one of the, I think it was uh, his girlfriend um, was taken over and she's sitting there in the doorway and he's, you know, Scotty's been beaten up and and Ash is trying to to tend to him and she's just kind of sitting there giggling at him and taunting him. And that's a pretty funny scene, but funny in a macabre way, not really a funny in a slapstick way that's, you know, although there there was a little bit of slapstick in there, but it still was more to serve the horror. Yeah. It's more funny in a, like a, an uncomfortable way. Uh, But, but in the second movie, you've got those brilliant scenes, like, the descent into madness when, you know, he's like, he starts laughing and all, you know, like the, the deer head turns, like everything in the place starts laughing and he's like bouncing up and down with the, you know, the light and he's laughing and it's like, it's so it's funny, but disturbing at the same time. You know what? I have to interject something. I think my first introduction to evil dead was that scene when Siskel and Ebert reviewed the movie. Mm-hmm. And because I remember seeing, you know, a poster for it and everything, but when they reviewed it, I, I saw, they showed that scene and I realized I, I have to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, think the- I may have seen that same review back in when I was a kid. Cause I remember there was, or, or it was on 2020 or something. We were talking about the effect of horror movies on kids. And I remember distinctly the, um, the ballerina scene they were showing when her head <laughs> rolls back up onto the body. And I was like, what movie is this? I have to see this. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the slapstick to me really started to become noticeable in evil dead Two Cause to me, what made evil dead Two great was the, the mix of the horror and the comedy. Whereas then an army of darkness, I was like, holy crap, they are going like full on slapstick. Like two minutes yeah. in, I'm like, okay, this is going to be fun. Yeah, Army of Darkness really cannot be um, considered a horror movie. It has horror elements in it, but it's really more of a fantasy comedy. It's a um, Looney Tunes cartoon. It is, yeah. <laughs> uh, give me some sugar, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's when he's full in full on ash mode by Art. that movie. <laughs> Well, and there was one line that I was specifically waiting for was the, this is my boomstick line. I knew it was from one of the movies and he goes this and I'm like, he's going to say it. He's going to say it. I'm I'm sitting, you know, on my couch at like 1030 at night, like, yeah, he said it. Well, you know, I saw Army Darkness in the theater also, which, which, you know, there's kind of an interesting backstory if you, you know, get into it as far as the rights moving from one company to another but universal actually had the rights at that point that's why it was as big of a budget as it was uh relatively speaking um well you know the, but- the crazy thing about that like i said after we watched that movie we went and got the um the comic book adaptation for it and it had the alternate ending where he overshot yeah. and woke up <laughs> in the, you know the, the the armageddon future i like and- that that ending better actually <laughs> they actually have that ending on the uh i have the dvd that i bought um it looks like a brown paper bag yeah. Yeah, covering it it's also. yeah it's got that alternate versus ending campbell versus the army of darkness yeah <laughs> yeah but uh but i when that movie came out of the theaters um you know i got a bunch of my friends to go see it 
And I think the audience was bewildered. I don't know if people really <laughs> understood what it was. And I mean, Mars Attacks had the same, oddly enough, uh, the same reaction. But there were people leaving the theater going, I, I, don't, I don't like this movie. I don't know what this, I don't know what I watched. And I was laughing through the whole thing. I mean, it just, it, you know, the, the level of humor that Evil Dead 2 brought to the table, which it was still a horror movie with a lot of comedy in it. Now it just was full, you know, full fledged, uh, you know, comedy. And going back and watching it, you know, repeatedly and seeing some of the, the aspects of it, it is a genius movie. I mean, it just is a real brilliant film. I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. Let's see a couple more comments here. Uh, uh, Devin Bryan asks us, and we'll we'll get to this in a bit. She asked hey, for Devin. our thoughts on. <laughs> she asked for our thoughts on the remake, which I, I do want to touch on that uh, as well. Uh, yeah. Nick Flagstar says, uh, "Evil Dead took a lot of heat for ruining the youth." Carlos Longoria, I only just saw the Evil Dead movies over the past couple of years, and he's been trying to catch up on all the classics. And uh, Chris Davis chimes in again. I only got to watch them at my friend's place during high school. By college, it was a group thing to do and enjoy. That's a great thing, too. Like, I would love to get together with a group of people and especially watch Evil Dead 2 and 3 mm-hmm. because they're just fun movies. And that, that's what I tell people is not every movie has to be this, you know, Oscar-winning drama or this revolutionary piece of filmmaking. What's great about this franchise is just pure, unadulterated fun. And I've had. Although I, I would movie. argue that this whole franchise is revolutionary. Yeah, I, I would say that same thing. Yeah, I, it it does a, and I don't know really much about the horror genre before Evil Dead One, but to me it's, to me it has to be up there with being the first like to balance the horror and comedy genre and make it work really well. You know, there were so many other movies, uh, especially as like the the Nightmare on Elm Street went along it became more comedy than horror and and i feel like evil dead 2 is still that perfect balance of comedy and horror and i i I couldn't tell you exactly how i couldn't make that movie but you know it just it inspired so many filmmakers i mean i i wanted to you know i saw what he did with evil dead and evil dead 2 and was like man i wish i could you know pester a bunch of dentists for money so i could make a movie and then you know for a couple hundred thousand dollars and then have it you know be one of the biggest cult hits of all time i mean that's just that's saying something you know for sure yeah, it's one of those that I, I do say I regret watching or not watching them until you know really over the last year because I, I would have loved. And it's because I didn't like the horror genre, but knowing now, I would have loved Evil Dead too because it, like you said, it's the perfect balance of the comedy and the horror. And you look at other movies that have come out since then, you know, I'll throw in like Shaun of the Dead and Zombieland that have that mix of the the two genres that. To me, really, Evil Dead 2 specifically started. And you know, let I, me add also that it's a great sequel. Um, yeah. Because it, it, even though it kind of rewrote the original movie, you know, in the, in the opening few minutes, um, it still has the, the basics of the first film. And it picked up, you know, pretty much where the first movie left off and continued the story and did something, even though... To some degree, it was a remake. Um, it moved the mythology forward and, you know, built upon the characters. I mean, the Ash character, like we said, really came out in this film as opposed to the original film. And it just, it continued the creativity and um, just really, you know, just took the mythology and ran with it, and, yeah. which is a, what a good sequel is supposed to do. And you talk about the comedy horror genre, you know, Shaun of the Dead is one of the best. And I'll say you know, even more recent than that, um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. <laughs> it's great. <is> it's <laughs> great. Like, it's up there as one of my favorite movies of all time now. I just love watching that movie. It's It just takes the whole slasher genre and just kind of flips it around on its head. Now, I can't recommend that movie enough. 
Yeah, I saw that for the first time. I want to say 2018 mm -hmm. was when it was, and it, I I loved it. It was so much. Well, fun. you know, th there's a very close connection between horror and comedy because I mean, when you think about it, both rely on pacing and timing and surprise. And with comedy, a lot of comedy is something that's terrible that happens to someone, yeah. and yet it's presented in such a way to where you're laughing at it. With with horror, of course, it's you know, horrible things that happen to people. And it's very easy to go from one to the other, I think. And, um, and that's why there's so many horror comedies that work when they're done right. Yes, definitely. When you think of two genres that mesh together, there are some that do and some that don't. But horror and comedy, like you said, is almost like a natural type of connection. Yeah. Well, and, and also when you're dealing with, you know, the, the emotions that horror is developing and, and it has you have to have that release. And so often a laugh is a good release. And especially if you can laugh at something. Some grisly. Well, not only that, the element of surprise, too, uh, you know, works. Uh, and this is the same principles to horror as it is for comedy. So there's just too many parallels between comedy and horror. It's just all in how you, you know, how it's interpreted. But like you said, Steve, it, it, comedy is basically horrible things happen to people that we laugh at. It's just put in a different context. So, you know, <laughs> it's just f hard to find that balance. And I think like Evil Dead 2 just found that perfect balance between the two. Even though I will say you kind of going off the element of surprise, there are people I know who watch horror movies because they like to be scared. Yeah. yeah. And oh, people yeah. people that say that you are insane. <laughs> it's a primal instinct in people because, you know, we're hardwired as primates to be scared and that's what drives us to live is fear. And in today's world, we really don't have much to fear, so we go looking for that, you know, that sense of fear. And a lot of times the way you find that is either with movies or video games. But it's also, you know, you have that sense of fear, but it's also the release afterwards that you have survived this. Yes. You know, the characters <laughs> of the movie may not have survived, but you made it through this okay. And there's that relief that, oh, you know, when that character that you identify with makes it through, and like, oh, good. You know, I was like, okay, they, they lived through it. And yeah. so to some degree, it's like, okay, we're going through the worst that could ha you know, possibly happen to make it out on the other side as the audience. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Well, to answer uh, Devin's question she asked earlier, Evil Dead was remade in 2013. Uh, what did you guys, <clears throat> as people who are longtime fans of the Evil Dead franchise. What did you guys think of the remake? It was good. Um, it, it was it was not the Evil Dead. You know, they um, first off they dropped the the from, from the title, but um, they, it was really they took the bare bones idea, the concept of it. You know, with people going out to the woods and you know, cabin in the woods and uh, resurrecting you know, the you know, demonic spirits. But this one was really more horror based than comedy based. And yeah, it was way more visceral. Yeah, and they, the they went movie. into the psychology of the of the characters. So. Well, that's what me and me and Derek were talking about it before we we started tonight, and I really I loved it. I loved the remake, and I didn't see any reason why they couldn't have the original Ash timeline and and make movies beyond this one in this timeline, and then have them through the Necronomicon, these two parallel universes come together so that her, her and Ash have to fight off, you know, the deadites to save, you know, the multiverse or the universe. Like that would have been the ultimate, you know, and then Spider-Man um, and flash. Joined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, you know, the, the Ash versus evil dead series. I don't, I don't know if, if you've seen that, Steve, Great, great show. Excellent. I love that show. Well, you so know, well, well, I want to get to that in just a second, but talking about the, the point that you made as far as the um, multiverse, you know, they are looking at doing another movie. And even though they haven't said explicitly if this is a direct sequel to the previous remake or if this is yet another standalone film, 
but it would be interesting if they tied it in. Now, I know that Bruce Campbell said he's not coming back anymore as Ash, but um, but it would be interesting to you know to tie everything in together because that remake, even though it does you know rehash the, the plot to some degree, it really doesn't have to be a standalone film. It, it could very well connect somehow. Oh, I know he said he'd never come back as Ash again, but money talks. <laughs> I see Bruce Campbell's being the guy that, you know, you flash a big uh, blank check in front of him. He'll come back and play Ash one more time. Well, considering that he showed up briefly in the end credits of the remake, just, yeah. uh, you know, um, it kind of said, okay, you know, we, we give our, you know, and of course he was a producer, too, but uh, it was like, okay, you know, this, this is kind of winking at the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that was my thought, too, because I actually watched the remake uh, right before we started the show. And what I liked about it was that, yeah, they took the the bare-bones story of the original, but it felt different enough. It, like you said, it wasn't really comedic at all. It was much more visceral. It was much more like a straight-up horror film. But I liked that because it wasn't the exact same thing. It wasn't and just a straight-up like- remake. Kind of like Evil Dead Two was the, uh, you know, the the perfect type of sequel. Uh, this was the perfect type of remake because, you know, the best remakes they take the idea and then do something original with it. They don't just rehash the same thing. You know, they they improve upon certain elements of it to where you're you're seeing something fresh and new, even though it's familiar. It's still full of surprises where you don't expect it. And it's a well-made movie, really well-acted, well-directed, well-written, well-executed. The effects in the cinematography I thought were good too. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, there were certain elements like, you know, the, the POV camera was very Sam Raimi-ish and like, eh, you know, if you're not going to continue with that style, um, why include that? That, that to me felt like fan service, but you know, I could see some audience members saying, well, it's not people dead unless you include that in there. Oh, okay, whatever. But it, it really wasn't necessary for this particular movie. Yeah. And, and also my thought as well was if they do a sequel, they got to bring Bruce Campbell back. And whether it's a multiverse thing or maybe somehow the stories are connected, I think that would be a really cool thing. Or even if you just want to do a sequel to, to this one and not include Bruce Campbell. I know it's it was made seven years ago, but you look at the gap between the original three movies. Mm-hmm. So I, I would personally be for a sequel to this movie because I, I think there was enough there to where I would want to see where you know, the Mia character goes. But just my personal uh, opinion. I'd definitely be interested to see a, a sequel to that one, and uh, and but I'd, I still want to see her attach a... Uh, a uh, chainsaw to her hand, to her bloody <laughs> stump. <laughs> now, uh, Jason, you were talking about the, the TV series, um, as far as, you know, kind of what they did with that. And I, I need to add that it's the perfect TV series of an old movie series, because kind of like Cobra Kai is just such a great show where it taps into the, um, you know, the original series and, and the nostalgia for it while continuing the storyline, that's what Ash versus Evil Dead did exactly. Now, the movie series has the worst continuity imaginable, (laughs) but the TV series somehow is consistent with continuity. And, you know, even with, when when they finally got around to mentioning him traveling to the Middle Ages, like, ah, great, they're acknowledging that Army of Darkness existed. And so there, all of the, the events happen, even you know if there's some questionable uh continuity <laughs> there um and they even brought back some of the original actors from from the first movie which was yeah so, and just you know throwing to um you know, to ash's background and he majors as his father <laughs> i mean it's just it's such a good show yeah it definitely takes more of the uh you know, the feel of, and the aesthetic of army of darkness with the, the kind of slapstickiness and uh, the whole ash, you know, hail to the King baby, you know, that, 
that whole thing, which I, I loved and I couldn't get enough of it. And it kind of sucks that each season is only like six episodes long. You know, it's not a very long series to get through. And each episode is only like 30 minutes. But honestly, it's one of those things where less is more. And, it, it, you know, it, it, they left you wanting more. And I, I would still be watching it if it was still on. And somehow they extend the story and the mythology to where, like, it all makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and also uh, bringing back uh, or bringing in Lucy Lawless, who mm-hmm. worked with Sam Raimi in uh, Xena, Princess Warrior. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Devin said that she loved the remake as well. Uh, Carlos Longoria said the one scene where the girl gets possessed was very intense. I agree mm-hmm. with that. And uh, Chris Davis, and I, I agree with this comment, too. He loves how Bruce Campbell makes fun of himself in My Name is Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing that the uh, that the remake did, which I thought was really intelligent, was, you know, the of course, the iconic imagery from you know, the first two movies is the possessed girl in the cellar, you know, under, you know underneath the chain um, trap door. And in this one, it's the main character that is that character and yeah. she gets possessed and when that happens it's just like okay she's she's the main character where is this going now and the fact that she's able to overcome it but she's the one that's trapped in the cellar um, I, I just I think that's a great way of twisting audience expectations because it still uses that um, you know that iconic imagery but in a new and fresh and original way Speaking of being trapped in the cellar, one of the still to this day makes me laugh uncontrollably is when uh, Ash get in Evil Dead 2 when Ash gets thrown into the cellar and the back of his head hits every step on the way down. <laughs> it's still to this day, I can't, I belly laugh watching that because it just looks so painful. And I'm like, I wonder if that really was Bruce Campbell or if that was a stunt man or who did that? I have a feeling it was Bruce. <laughs> if it was Sam Raimi put him through uh, a lot of torture. I'm days. sure he had a headache for quite a few days after that. <laughs> All for the craft. Yep. Well, and that's actually a great segue into what I wanted to ask you guys next. What are some of your specific favorite moments from from the evil dead franchise like you know some of mine of course you know when he puts the the chainsaw on his uh, hand for the first time and says groovy finally got to see that little line i've seen the gif i don't know how many times and like i finally get to see it in context but um that and really like any one-liner from army of darkness just made me laugh well, I tell you, there's one specific scene in Evil Dead 2 that still <laughs> even me and our good friend Wally Phelps still say to this day is when he's starting to lose his mind in, in the, the cabin and he screams, got a little double barrel shotgun for you. <laughs> see if we don't. <laughs> and to this day, me and Wally always say to each other, see if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about that line, but it cracks me up. And um, pr- uh, pretty much any line from Army of Darkness, you know, like this is my boomstick to uh, come get some, like the, that. Everything. Get some sugar, baby. Yeah, every line <laughs> yeah. in Army of Darkness is gold. Um, for me, in Evil Dead Two, uh, this scene cemented me as a permanent, lifelong fan of Bruce Campbell. When he is knocked out and his possessed hand <laughs> starts dragging him across the floor and then proceeds to attack him and he's fighting with his hand, that is just a tour de force performance. And I mean, just it, it's brilliant, it's just sheer brilliance. And, you know, getting back to the difference between the first movie and the second movie, I'm sure that when they came down to doing the second film, Bruce and Sam sat down and said, okay, what? What can we do? You know, you're by yourself in this cabin. You know, they had to add some more characters at some point, but for the longest time, it's just him by himself. What does he do? And I'm sure they just kind of brainstormed and said, well, why don't we do this? And, you know, played with his hand. Well, you know, there's, 
you you old. mentioned that part where he he does the standing front flip uh, yeah. during that part, <laughs> and he talks about if Chins could kill. That's what he did when he went into uh, audition for Briscoe County Junior. Nice. He went into the audition room and did the front standing flip that he did in <laughs> Evil Dead Two, and that's what it got got him the part for Briscoe County Junior. Now for Army of Darkness, I think the uh, my favorite moment was when he's standing over uh, the three books <laughs> and he thinks he has the right book now <laughs> and he's getting ready to say the, the, the magic words and he can't remember it, which, which by the way, was a throwback to uh, the lines from uh, Day the Earth. Uh, thank you. Day the Earth. So, uh, um, which don't Plato, ask me. <laughs> Marada, yeah. <laughs> I may not have said every syllable, but I basically said it. Uh, but if anyone in the chat wants to throw out your favorite uh, Evil Dead moment, definitely uh, leave it and I'll read it here on the show. Like Carlos Longoria says, I like the part, and I love this too, but I like the part where he's fighting the tiny versions of himself in mm -hmm. Army of Darkness. Yeah. Oh, that's another Tour de Force <laughs> performance. And just... Again, it's him by himself, even though he's playing multiple characters, but um, just amazing physical comedy. Well, I think it says something, you, you know, I think of other like solo performances like Tom Hanks and Castaway or Will Smith and I Am Legend. You know, yeah, Castaway was recently. just so hilarious. Well, I, I mean, in the sense <laughs> of having an actor perform by themselves yeah, for a I majority <laughs> of the movie. So. <laughs> Yeah, Castaway had some low key, no, I'm kidding. It didn't really have much low key <laughs> comedy. But um, no, the, uh, the Army was one of those movies like initially I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then as the humor kept happening, I'm like, man, they're really going all in on this slapstick thing. And I wasn't sure if I was <laughs> liking it or not. But by the end, like I, I loved it. I, I want to watch two and three again for sure. Because those to me are like Evil Dead 2 is probably my favorite then Army of Darkness would be second. Then I would put the remake and then the uh, the original one. Well, they're perfect Halloween movies. I mean, pretty much anything in the Evil Dead franchise is a, a perfect Halloween movie to watch. The perfect time of year to watch it because it'll get you right into the Halloween spirit. Absolutely. No, and I was glad that, you know, the the Patreons voted on this because it's a franchise that, I've been wanting to see for for quite some time and getting to actually talk about it was was really cool and I'm excited to to watch I mean I'll probably watch Evil Dead 2 definitely before before Halloween like it's just it's that good of a movie if you want like you said Jason a perfect Halloween movie Evil Dead 2 is right up there because it's oh, it's yeah. one that you can sit at home by yourself and laugh you can watch it with a ton of people and you'll all laugh with each other see if we don't <laughs> <laughs> let, let me throw this out there too um two other sam raimi films that um kind of kind of tie in um but if you really like the style of this uh one which is not a horror movie but it has four elements is dark man yes just a precursor to his spider-man days um but it's got liam neeson in it too liam neeson, yeah <laughs> Uh, back Bruce when Campbell. <laughs> he was not a uh, an action hero, um, but uh, yeah, that is, um, Dark Man just it has that same kind of visual flair to it, and it just really is is a fantastic film. And then Drag Me to Hell is really yeah. a lot in the um, in the army. I'm sorry, the Evil Dead vein, although more horror elements to it than yeah. But it has the same kind of makeup effects, and same visual style. Yeah, that's a very, very underrated movie. Not a lot of people talk about that movie, Drag Me to Hell. I really like Drag Me to Hell. That movie's great. And if you want to see Sam Raimi do something different, um, there's... Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he actually did a movie called The Gift, which is about a woman who's a psychic and negative things that happened to her and everything but it's it's more of a suspense thriller which is really really good um and then i'm gonna have to kind of reference one is just a second um uh 
Um, a Simple Plan. Um, yeah. Billy Bob Thornton, I believe, wrote that movie. It was based on mm-hmm. the book. Um, and it's it's a drama, uh, but it's again, it's like a suspense thriller, and it just is so well-crafted, and it has very little of the Sam Raimi flair to it, but it just, it's just brilliant. Every time I talk to you guys, I hear of like five or six more movies that I have to watch. <laughs> you definitely have to read A Chance Could Kill, though. You, that's a must read if you're interested in the Evil Dead franchise. If I can find, if there is an audiobook, I mean, I'll, I'll read it anyway, but if there's an audiobook where Bruce Campbell reads it, that will mm-hmm. be what I definitely get. <laughs> Because like I always knew of Bruce Campbell is like even before I watched Evil Dead, he just seemed like one of those really cool actors that it just seems like he'd be a cool person to have a beer with or yeah. something. But after watching these movies, I have such better appreciation for him as an actor and not just a personality. Yeah, it's a real shame he never got to be like a mainstream leading man. I think he had the ability to do it. It's just he wasn't given that huge break I, I think briscoe county jr was kind of as close as he got to it but i think he just had that stigma of b-movie leading man and just never quite got his due as you know uh, an a-lister leading man which i mean he yeah, but he's, still... he's worked consistently though i mean that's yeah. the thing he's never really disappeared i mean he did um burn notice for what seven years yeah mm-hmm. so. yeah what it... was the other it was like I was saying earlier, it seems like he's one of those that is known like maybe more for just him being cool. Yeah, he's than, more known for being himself now than yeah. <laughs> anything else, which is what we all aspire to, you know? Absolutely. Which I think, honestly, I think that whole Bruce Campbell persona isn't really him. It's just it's <laughs> that whole persona that, you know, he kind of lives with now. Yeah. Oh, Jack of all trades. So oh, that's what I that just popped in my head a minute ago. Yeah, I forgot about that show. I like that show. It was a, it was a fun, fun show, but it was uh, I think it was produced for syndication. Yeah. Well, it was a spinoff of uh, I think Xena, wasn't it? No. Because he, I think he was the same. No, he was in Xena. He played a character, but it was sort of in that that yeah, he was vein. in Xena. Yeah. Uh, no, Jack of all trades was. Yeah, it was a syndicated uh, television. Nineteenth century. Yeah, it wasn't in the same era. Oh, okay. But yeah, it was it was one of those 90s syndicated television shows. It was after Briscoe County Jr. But uh that was one of those shows that was really good and it just kind of dropped off and disappeared. And, and another with a lot of 90 shows. Another really oddball movie that he was in where he played Elvis uh was Bubba Hotel. Yes. I have to see <laughs> yes. this. Oh, you've never seen Bubba Hotep? I have not. Ozzy Davis plays uh, uh, JFK, <laughs> <laughs> who's had his, uh, um, they, his, his, apparently the, the brains that were missing was filled with a bag of sand. And uh, he, he looked at him, he said, you do know that JFK was white, right? He's like, they dyed me this color. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you got to see that movie. It's so good. It's the great. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add it to my list. I've got like three movies now to watch every night for the rest of the week. Oh yeah, Bubba Hotep's a great Halloween movie to watch too. It's so out there. Well, and that's been the cool thing about even you know, through chatting with you and then doing these shows is that it's given me much more of an appreciation for the the genre of horror like even back to you know like every year on nerd cave retro we do a halloween movie based episode and it in a way forces me to watch a horror movie yeah (laughs) so like the more i watch it it's like the more i'm like okay maybe this genre isn't really all that bad yeah well uh, speaking of which join us this wednesday on on my twitch channel for our discussion of we we are joined by joey the wrestler joey image as we talk about uh halloween 18 which I will be watching, uh, if not tonight, I'll be watching it tomorrow. And that's Halloween 2018, not the 18th movie in the series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which it no, feels we, like there have been that many. But yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> 
I've actually, since we're on the topic of Halloween, I know this is an Evil Dead based episode, but since we have Steve <laughs> on, I have to ask you this question because I know Jason's thoughts on it. What are your thoughts on Halloween Three: Season of the Witch? Oh, it's a great movie. It's it's underrated because um, it threw people off when it came out that like this isn't a Michael Myers movie. What is this? this is, they call mm-hmm. it Halloween Three, but it has nothing to do with the first two movies. Um, so the marketing of it was really misplaced, and really they they should have just released it as Season of the Witch. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's a fun, creepy movie and uh, very very underrated you gave the correct answer yeah <laughs> yeah tom adkins is going to be at pensacon this year oh, yeah. and uh, i'm going to have him sign my vhs copy of halloween three season of the witch well and we had this conversation you know on nerd cave retro last year is that I know that was the original plan for John Carpenter was for it to be an anthology type series, but I, I do agree with you, Steve, that it should have been marketed as just season of the witch. I'm going to say this. This is a controversial statement. Halloween three is my favorite Halloween movie. Don't at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get the, uh, you know, the meme of the guy sitting at the table with the coffee cup and the sign in front. Yeah. I need to replace him with you. <laughs> Halloween 3 is the best Halloween movie. Changed my mind. Dude, just go on my uh, Instagram page. I already made that meme. All you got to do is just put my face over his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, as we start to wrap up here, what do you guys think is the overall legacy of the Evil Dead franchise? We'll, we'll start with you, Jason. I think it's it's still going to be one of the most influential you know, horror horror comedies of all time. I mean, it was, I'm sure that, you know, there were horror comedies before, you know, this came along, even as far back as the forties with like, you know, Frankenstein meets Abbott and Costello, but the bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. The bride of Frankenstein. But I really feel like the horror genre really like became what it is when evil dead Two hit. And that sort of set the template for what horror comedy should be from that point on. And like I said, Sam Raimi is such an influential director. You know, you look at a Sam Raimi movie and you know, it's a Sam Raimi movie and you know, the legacy of Bruce Campbell, you know, we all love the man. I mean, he can do no wrong. I follow him on Twitter. Um, Just that whole franchise, uh, whether it's been remade or, or, or what it's still, it's a beloved franchise and it's, it's never going to go away. Steve? Uh, well, I think the biggest uh, legacy, if you will, from that is it gave Sam, uh, Sam Raimi a career. I mean, we wouldn't have had his Spider-Man trilogy without Evil Dead. And what he brought to that franchise owes a lot, even though there's only really one scene that is a direct reference to to the horror, uh, his horror background, which is uh, the surgery and Doc Ock surgery part two. Um, but, you know, him doing the Evil Dead directly, you know, uh, went into Dark Man, which was responsible for him doing Spider Man. And, you know, just um, he has a career because of it. Um, but from the horror standpoint, I think what, um, what he was able to show was it doesn't matter what your budget is what matters is how creative you are in executing. And as I said before, you know, you look at the original film and he had to step up the creativity. He had to come up with these wild shots and just bizarre ways of doing things to, to keep entertained. Otherwise it would have just been another bad horror movie that would have been you know, and speaking of Dark Man, I, I'm going to say this. It's a shame they never let Sam Raimi make a Batman movie because I feel like Dark Man was uh, the best Batman movie of the 90s. <laughs> it was just, it's one of the, if you've never seen it, Derek, it, it's just one of those weird, it's a superhero movie, but it's also horror and it's um, psychological. I, I don't know. It's just, it's so many genres mashed into one and it's such a cool movie. They, I, I really wish that they would do a remake of it 
and maybe not even a remake, but just another one. I mean, Liam, ne- Liam Neeson still makes action movies, even though the <laughs> dude's, you know, 98 years old. Why not bring him back as, you know, Dark Man for one more go? I don't well, you know. Th- there was a series of direct to video uh, sequels. Yeah, but they were about not Liam good. Neeson and about Sam Raimi. And a TV yeah. show. Did you see the TV show? It was oh, terrible. I vaguely remember Awful. it. <laughs> it was, ugh, it was bad. Well, I mean, we all know Liam Neeson's going to outlive us anyway, so he might as well just do another Dark Man. (laughs) Might as well. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I agree with what both you guys were saying, but like my initial thought when I think of the legacy of the Evil Dead franchise is that it it put the balance of two genres on the map. Like you had mentioned, Jason, there were others probably before Evil Dead 2 came out, but... I think that really set the standard for what a horror comedy should be. And it's been, yeah. there's been a lot of other great horror comedies, you know, that we've mentioned, but that really to me is the legacy of the franchise is that it, it, it put that genre, that genre mix on the map. And yeah. I, I wish we would see more, you know, I, I, I haven't had a chance to watch Ash versus evil dead yet. I plan on watching uh, at least the first couple of episodes later this week, but from what oh, I've seen of clips, I, you, I love it. you won't be able to watch just uh, the first yeah. couple because yeah, like, you're okay, gonna... <laughs> next one, now we watch the next one. Um, it's just it's such a great show, <laughs> and it goes by quick too. Like I said, each episode is less than thirty minutes long, so it goes by fast. Well, Steve, I think you made the the Cobra Kai comparison, and I I love the Cobra Kai series. So if it's anything like that, I cannot wait to watch it. Mm-hmm. Well, and the thing is that they, right off the bat, they they acknowledge the fact that uh, Bruce Campbell and Ash have become old. <laughs> I mean, they're not the, the you know young uh, guys that can do all these you know stunts anymore. Yeah, but they um, totally play into that, though. Oh, they play into it wonderfully. And, I mean, the uh, first episode has them put on a girdle. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's that it's that. Um, sequence where he's you know buckling up and strapping up and then you the camera pulls back and yeah he's, he's putting on a curl. So. <laughs> yeah josh says in the chat you'll watch the entire series in a day yeah <laughs> i'm predicting that <laughs> so maybe i'll save that for saturday mm. but we'll perfect see. halloween day uh, absolutely uh, well save it for after halloween fest and which is a great segue into what I was going to ask <laughs> next. Do you guys have anything you want to plug? Steve, let's start with you. Yes, if you're in Pensacola, uh, in the area, come on down to Museum Plaza this Saturday on Halloween uh, for Pensacon Halloween Fest. It's an outdoor, open area uh, event. Uh, you require masks and you know, try to keep things as safe as possible. But we have Warren Nemec, who was in the stand and... Harper Lewis can't lose. Love that uh, show. Uh, Jason <laughs> London, who you know was from Gaze and Confused, and Carrie Two, The Rage. Um, we've got the cast of Nightmare Theater that's going to be out there. We've got a couple panels that are doing uh, entertainment going on all day long. We got a bunch of vendors, food trucks. It's just going to be a really fun day. Um, the first fifty kids that are there get a free bag um, with goodies in it, and it can go around to all the different vendors and go trick or treating. Uh, we have a a uh, free kids contest, uh, I'm sorry, costume contest um, at three o'clock, followed by an adult costume contest, right, which I should say, a con, a, a con- I can't speak, <laughs> costume contest for adults, not an adult. Um, that's $5 and register there at the, at, um, at the event. And the best part about this whole thing is it is free. Come out and just enjoy it. What about you, Jason? Anything you want to plug? Uh, well, if you like retro games, follow me and Derek both over at Nerd Cave Retro, uh, nerdcaveretro.com. Uh, we record live every Wednesday at 7.30. Uh, this Wednesday, we're going to be joined by um, the our favorite wrestler, jo- Mr. Joey Image, who will be joining us. To Every Halloween, we do a, a, a scary movie that we review, and this year it's going to be Halloween 2018. Uh, we'll be doing that live Wednesday night at 7.30. If you can't watch it live, um, just go follow us, uh, Nerd Cave Retro on Facebook. 
uh, Twitter, Instagram, and um, follow us on uh, uh, subscribe to the podcast. Pretty much anywhere you can subscribe to podcast, Spotify, um, iTunes, a- everywhere podcasts are available. We we are there. Fantastic. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this uh, really fun discussion. I'm sure I'll be asking you guys uh, in the very near future to do another one. So thank you very much. I'm down. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And if you want to follow this show on social media, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at D Diamond Podcast. If you want to subscribe to the show, it's on all podcasting platforms. Just search for the Derek Diamond Experience. And if you could, please leave a review. The more reviews I have, the more visible I become to the podcasting public. And I'd also like to thank my close friends, the Unicorn Wranglers, for providing the theme music for the podcast. You can check out all their stuff on Apple Music, Google Play, and Spotify. That's going to do it for this week's show. Enjoy the rest of your week. Have a safe and fun weekend. Thank you for tuning in to another awesome episode of the Derek Diamond Experience. I am your host, Derek Diamond, and we'll see you guys back here next Thursday. (laughs) 